have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and I suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so a long time with you, and you have not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And I saith thou then, show us the Father. Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak unto my, myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the work, very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall, that shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto myself, my, unto my Father. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you do ask anything in my name, I will do it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They, thou prepare at the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, in, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. For when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought past the same this is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unremovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Service will start here in about 11 minutes. I want to make sure we keep our cell phones turned off or are muted. Make sure we don't disturb the worship service on this morning. We ask that you pray for this family on today and home going of their loved ones.
congregation, for those of you that haven't reviewed yet, it is time that you come. The reviewing will be over in five minutes. Service will start at 11 o'clock.
it is 11 o'clock, the service will begin. And as tough as it is today, family, this is the home going. Amen? Amen. This is the home going of our dear sister, our dear friend, our dear loved one, Sister Barbara Taylor. And I can tell you some of the family you're sitting in, some of the spots she sat in for many years over there. I can see her. I can hear her in my ear right now. And she would get up even during prayer time to let people know what to pray for or who to pray for and or how or, or her testimony or what God had brought her through. Amen. Amen. So we're not, we may have tears of sorrow and tears of sadness of separation, but we're here celebrating the saint that's gone on to the Lord. Amen. We've gone, we're here to celebrate a saint who learned from Christ the way she conduct herself on down here. And now she's no suffering that she has to deal with anymore. Any pain she has to do with it anymore. Now she's at the feet of Jesus and wouldn't come back here if we bribed it. Amen. 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 So as tough as it may hurt and this, uh, the sadness was set in, that those, those tears aren't tears of no hope. Those tears are hope that knowing she's gotten for her reward. Amen. That's in heaven. Amen. 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 We will follow the order of the service written by the family. In respect for the family, we'll have the scriptures by... Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Philip Taylor will have prayer by pulpit, Mr. Vernon Eskridge. We have a musical selection by the choir. We have acknowledgments and condolences by Dr. Carmen Tillery. Uh, we'll have remarks of one minute. Please, be respectful of the family. One minute, please. If you feel like you need to tell something that's longer than two minutes, just wait to the repast and tell it to the, to the family then. Uh, another musical selection, uh, Words of Comfort by myself and Grant Lewis. We have benediction and recession. We'll go in that order of the program. Amen. Amen. This time we'll call for the scriptures by Mr. Philip Taylor to our podium to the right. Good morning. Give an honor to our Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth, pastor, minister, family, and friends. Uh, I will be uh, reading five scriptures, two from the Old Testament, three from the New. First scripture is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Psalms 18. Verses 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my, and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. New Testament. John verse, uh, chapter 14. Verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe, believe also in me. In my Father. Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where, where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. 
Romans 8, verses 35, 37 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height or depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And lastly, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader. Amen. This time we'll have a prayer from the pulpit. Let us bow our heads, please. To the minister, to the family, to Mother Taylor saw this morning. Almighty God. We come this morning, Lord, for a homegoing celebration. We're asking that you bless this family in the absence of a loved one. Not only this family, Lord, but bless this church in the absence of some lovely sister, mother that have walked in these doors many years. We thank you, Lord, for the time that you lent her here for us. She was a maker, Lord. Through pains, she walked through those doors every Sunday. Through happiness was the smile on her face. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us such a beautiful person. To demonstrate your love. Oh Lord. We know Sister Taylor right now is happy. Because she is walking around heaven. With no problems. We know Sister Taylor is happy Lord. No pain and no sorrow in her mind now. But we do know that the family is missing a loved one. Bless them. We do know that this church is missing another disciple, Lord, for you. Help us, Lord. We know that you said we'll be here for a little while. We're just passing through. But Lord, when you put a soldier here that can lead and guide the children, one that show love in every direction. Help us, Lord. And we know that smile that we've seen on Sister Barbara Taylor's face is lit up right now. It's a home-going celebration. A homecoming celebration for her. We are missing but Lord, the direction and the illustration and the instruction that she left. Let it live in our hearts, Lord. 
Because we know, we know that leadership for you is the main thing in our life. In your son Jesus' name. I said, in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
ductility. Good morning. Good morning. Ministers Pulpit, church family. Always a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. At this time, I'd like to read a few highlights, cards, and acknowledgments sent to the family. Remember someone special. Your loved one left a legacy of special things like these, acts of kindness, friendships, and happy memories. That is the Foster Grandparent Program. Amen. I have fought a good fight Finished the course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love had his appearing. Second Timothy 4, 7, 8. To Deacon Howard, Sister Arlene Sharp, Sister Barbara Hunt, and family of Miss Mother Barbara Taylor, Cleveland Avenue Baptist Church extends its deepest sympathies to you due to the loss of your loved one. We are praying for you during this difficult, difficult time. To Trustee Marion Helene, Sister Eartha Urshry, Brother David Urshry, and the family of Barbara Taylor. The pastor, officers, and members of Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church extend our deepest sympathy to you as you mourn the loss of your loved one, Sister Barbara Taylor. Be encouraged by the word of God in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, which states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your straight your paths. Me mis excuse me, Metropolitan Missionary B Baptist Church, Reverend Wallace Hatfields, the second pastor. We, the members of the Women's Missionary Union of Progressive Missionary Baptist Church, extend our deepest sympathy to the family as you mourn the death of your beloved mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, and family member, Sister Barbara Taylor. Words cannot express how we felt hearing the news that our fellow laborer in Christ had gone home to glory. Sister Barbara Taylor was a faithful member of the Progressive MBC she was a member of the Hannah Missionary Circle and served as treasurer of the Women's Missionary Union. Today we honor our sister, Deacon Jeffrey Matthew, Senior Chairman of the Deacon Board, the Women's Missionary Union of Progressive Missionary <coughs> Baptist Church. Peter 5, 7, call all your care upon him. He careth for you. And that was sent on behalf of Jeffrey Matthews, chairman of the Deacon Board as well. The American Forest planted a tree on behalf of Sister Barbara Taylor. And from flowers displayed here from the, the Lyle, Perry Woods, and Parker family, Santa Fe Trail family, cousins Edith, Edith John, and Stephanie, and of course, Progressive Missionary Baptist Church and Foster Grandparent Program. The last piece I'd like to read for you is a poem on behalf of the family and acknowledge of Sister Barbara Taylor. It's called Grandma Hands. Dear Grandma, thank you for always being there for me. I will remember your home cooking, how your mac and cheese was made of spoonfuls of love, and that fried chicken and the hopes <coughs> on the wings of a dove. I remember your salt warm velvety blanket laying on the bed and your warm breathing close to my head. When you held me, you always said, the world is full of promise. Reserve your pride and swallow your fright and make sure you come home safely every night. Always follow the light. Thanks for all the small, nice things you did for me, Grandma, getting me those pretty outfits and hairdos. You always put me in the right mood to find my own groove. Thank you, Grandma, for your unconditional love. I will always remember the kindness. I will remember that kindness is a choice. And because of you, I can always find my voice. That's dedicated from granddaughter Barbara Lynn Hunt. 
Rest in peace, grandma, mother, aunt, sister, great grandma, and friend. We will all cherish you and your memories to the end. We all remember our Aunt Barbara, full of spirit and love. She loved people to scratch her head. I used to do that as a little girl. So she had long, flowing, pretty hair, way before we. She was a lover of music, <coughs> gospel, all music, and R&B. So family, please, with me, and we want to recognize also the Archibald family who has come to, to be here with us today. So rest in peace, peace, Aunt Barbara Taylor. Now we're going to have remarks. Uh, Reverend Lewis will do that for us, help us to manage our remarks. Please remember, let it be brief, concise, and straight from the heart. Amen. Amen. I was second day, amen. Those who will give remarks, please come up this time. Remember, keep yourself to one minute, please, in respect for the family. daughter of Sam Taylor from Chicago. And it looks like I got a lot, because I got a lot of papers, but uh, I had somebody to print it up. I told them to print it in big print <laughs> so I could see it. <laughs> you all probably could see it too. <laughs> well, I just want to say, I know I can say all the incredible accolades about Barbara. <laughs> Being a great daughter, wife, mother, Grandmother, auntie, cousin, well, she was my cousin. But most of all, she was a friend. Regardless of how you knew Barbara, she was a friend. A friend from every window you looked through. Being there, giving you the love and support, that laugh when you needed it. Like, you know that sugar is not good for you. But she'll be lighting up one herself. <laughs> Barbara is a person you could not imagine not being in your life. But you can imagine, but just try to imagine this. The gates of heaven slinging open as a loud crowd gathered. Began to gather as Barbara started to twerk her way through, and only took her hand and said, welcome home, welcome to our new home. But Barbara has graduated from that, their earthly duties of carrying the aches and pains to their new assignment, watching us share the joy and love with all the loving memories she has left behind. But the unconditional support and love she has given us will always be remembered. And much love and respect for Barbara Taylor. And that's it. Amen. Good morning to the family of Sister Taylor and family and friends. Uh, my name is Daryl Lewis, and I'm the musician for this church. I just want to say I am going to miss uh, Sister Taylor. Amen. Sister Taylor was everybody's fan. <laughs> if she enjoyed what she heard, whether it was in preached word or singing, you heard her. If you didn't hear nobody else, she was a worshiper. She, yes. she was not afraid to say, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Right. So I would encourage the family today. I know you're going to miss her, but we know where she is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would encourage you as we continue in this service to remember her and her praise and uh, I encourage you to do the same. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 Good morning, family. Good morning. My name is Anthony uh, Taylor Sr. And I, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I was not Barbara's favorite. Yeah. I 
know it's a bunch of us here, you know, nephews. <laughs> snitch on us, you know, to, you know, our, our dad and our mom. So our barber was wonderful wife to our uncle Lee. I mean, she catered to him. When he, was, when he got sick, she had to wash, bathe, bed. You know, she did all of that. So we all know that her heavenly reward, her mansion has to be super large. You know, because she was worthy of what she did for all of us. So she's going to be missed, but her, the celebration, we will always remember that. And I always remember when she was right there off of, right around the corner from Grandma. You know, she took care of Grandma, Grandpa, she did it all. But uh, she's going to be missed. Bobby, Greg, and grandkids, answer the phone. That's all I have to say. Love you, man. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Rita Archibald. I'm representing the Archibald family, so we each get a minute, so I'll be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was number three, and uh, I was 11 when Barbara came into our lives and into our home and blessed us with her presence. Um, she was a wise woman, a strong woman, but most of all, loving. And I know how much she loved her family and her children and the time working for us took away from her family. Um, and I am sorry for that, and, but I feel like we were so lucky. And I think, you know, I was 11 years old, so I was somebody who didn't like an adults, and she was an adult to me when she came, and it took a while to trust. But uh, a significant thing, there's just a million stories, and I won't do them all, but. Um, when one of my sisters ran away and she was very troubled and depressed and we were really scared about what was happening, we found her and we couldn't get her home and I was on the phone with her and somebody said, give the phone to Barbara. <laughs> and Barbara took care of it. Barbara got her home and told my parents, no, you are not, <laughs> you know, no retribution here. And she had, had that power in the house and we stayed connected all these years, and uh, you know she was home with her family for Christmas and stuff for, for my father's birthday when in the anniversaries when the family would be all together. Barbara would be there, and we've been talking a lot the last few years, particularly through the pandemic, because she called me real early on, and I found out she was going to church, and I'm a nurse, and I'm like, no, no, <laughs> we need to stop. And then we talked a lot about the grandparents program. And I worked as a psychiatric nurse, and when I talk about her wisdom, I really know what I'm talking about. I could not believe the story she would tell me about what was happening with the kids and the level of skill she had, but it was all so much because she was coming from the heart and the intuition and her love of children. That was something my mom, my grandmother, and her were alike. It's like, love the babies, just love having the children, and interacting always with the children, and, and that keeping that youth uh, by being plugged into to the children that way. So, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. We have one more. I just want to take the time to thank the Wilson family 
by giving us love. She has such overwhelming love for all of us. And she's just wonderful to have her in our family. And when she would come for the family events, just waiting on her to come through that door because she had so much spirit. And it was like that, get the party on. <laughs> and that's the way it was from that point on. So I just want to take that time just to thank you all for Bob. Thank you. This would be should be the last one. You got you come on over. <laughs> Good afternoon to each of you. To the uh, Barbara Taylor family, uh, my name is uh, Annetta Snorgrass, the previous pastor uh, here for Grassbrook before his uh, passing. Um, but I couldn't just sit there and not, on the pastor's behalf, speak the goodness of Sister Barbara Taylor. She loved him as her pastor. She loved her pastor, and he loved her. The things of it, uh, talking to Sister Taylor over the phone day to day and week to week, we found that we had so many things in common, from deaths of loved ones to birthdays to marriages to Sister Brother Taylor. At the same time, she shared a birthday with my own son. So the thing, but the, the biggest thing that I cannot go for the rest of my life is the peach cobbler that she made. <laughs> I know she's probably made for every person in her family or whatever, but whenever pastor, and he'd be looking right at her, he'd say, uh, uh, is there going to be a peach cobbler down in the, <laughs> down in the, in the uh, cafeteria today for whatever special holiday it was or occasion? But for each of you all that I don't know personally, and I've just recently met uh, uh, Sister Barbara over the phone, and I know Brother Robert well over the phone, and him bringing Mother to and fro every single opportunity that he could or needed to. He was there to get her here. To Sister Rita, and the ones that she has called out by name, I personally have felt that I know you Personally, I may not have met you, but she spoke well of you all as her family. She called you all by name, in prayer, in conversations. And uh, Sister Rita, uh, I was the one that spoke to you when you was there. I'm so grateful that that was the last time that I got to speak to Mother Taylor. And I appreciate your passing over the phone because family means much to me, to this particular church family, and when one of us is missing, we all feel it. So please let us be included in the loss of your own beloved Sister Barbara Taylor. We will miss her. Amen. 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 This will be the last, last one. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Catherine Hunt. Barbara is my daughter-in-law. Barbara Taylor, my friend. We would talk on the phone all the time about everything. Whether she was going to make a pecan pie for Victor, my son, or my husband, Bill. She was so good. I'm going to miss her. She loved our grandson. She loved her family. Period. I just want to know where that Chicago group is that sang happy birthday to me. We, I saw you on the video. And one of the things that I'll always remember about Barbara Taylor is her singing. She was singing happy birthday, no matter where we were. We were in restaurants for dinner, and she'd start singing, and everybody in the place would start singing with her. But we're going to miss Barbara Taylor. 
and I thank her for being in our lives, the Hunt family. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Family, please share those words that have been given on today. Um, and please, I encourage you all as we come back and repass and continue to tell these stories. Continue to li let her live on through the stories that are in your heart and mind that you all have encountered through all these years. The family wants to hear those. Amen. So please, family and friends, don't let this be where they stop. Continue to have those conversations when the cards stop coming in and the food stops coming and the calls stop happening. Please call and check in and say, hey, let me tell you about the story. This is the table. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have a selection from the choir at this time, and then we'll come with the words of comfort. <laughs>
I know his eye is on that spirit. I know he is watching me. Aren't you glad? Yes, yes. His eye is on you. Aren't you glad when you're going through life's ups and downs, on life's busy highways, he's still got his eyes just set on you? Yes. Are you glad to have his comfort and his grace and mercy through life's situations? Recognizing the officers, the sheriffs, the deacons, the, to the, to the, thank you to the to minister experts, Thanks for the choir, the trust, and the trustees, and the, and the ushers, and uh, musicians, everyone being in their respective places this morning for the support of this family. She was a member of this church. She is our beloved member. We, we, we have tears of sorrow as well, because we know she was an active member of this church, and we will be different without her. And we'll be, so the prayer is not only just for the family, but we want to pray for our church family as well that will go on these next few days, these years going forward, knowing she's gotten her reward already, and we'll just wait for ours. Amen? Amen. But, uh, just so you know, the, the family has asked that this service be not be long. Uh, we, our, love, our loved one has gone to glory, and they didn't want to be here too long. And so uh, we're not going to hold the family long. We're not going to hold the family to four hours a day. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord on this morning that hopefully gives some comfort to the family. Coming from John, the 10th chapter. And we'll be, just read verses 9 and 10. Family, we do want to thank you for allowing us to come and be with you at, at the hospital center to have prayer with you all. And those couple of days that we were there, uh, we just appreciate you all letting us come in and do that. And just let you know that the church family, we are here to support you as well. And she talked about you all like y'all are members here. And so we want to let y'all know that we are here to support you as well. And that just because she's gone on to be the Lord, the support has not gone. We're still here supporting you. So we thank you for the opportunity and we continue to pray for you all. John chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, and it reads as such from the King James Version. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. This will speak short this morning from a thought, from the thought, a door worth entering. A door worth entering. Every day in the second of our lives, we enter through doors. When we got up this morning, we had to go through the door to go through our bedroom or go to the door to the bathroom or go to the door to get into the vehicle, go to the door to come into this church. We have all access doors. And most of these doors we come to not locked. We or in, if we come into the house of our, 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 our house doors, we have keys to that. We're able to walk in and go in and do what we need to. We have keys to our car door to walk in and do what we need to do and drive, those type of things. We go in these doors, have free access. We don't never think about the door being locked. Yeah, yeah. There are times in life where we walk to a door and the door is locked and we find ourselves, who, got, who left the door locked? There's someone not here, we find ourselves knocking to get in because I don't have a key to get in this door. So we think about the, the, the narrow of life and how life treats us. The doors are what we're, is a commonplace for us. Doors in the physical world on earth are, are commonplace for us. We come through these things all the time, never thinking they have any spiritual meaning. But we look at the thing of doors, what Jesus is talking about today, they have all the spiritual meaning. We look here in chapter 9, John, is, uh, in chapter, John chapter 9, Jesus is here now battling with the Pharisees. And if you understand this, this forsaken time, the Pharisees were the bad guys, the unbelievers. And they were sitting here having the questions about Jesus him healing somebody that was blind from birth. They were questioning what he did and how he did it. The, the person is now blind. Not only are they they're able to see now, but they're a believer. And because they're a believer, the Pharisees had all these questions. And coming to chapter 10, Jesus is going to say, let me, let me break some things down for you. Let me tell you a parable here that you may understand. 
that may help you understand what just took place here and what needs to take place for children of, the, of, of this world. He starts talking about the sheepfold. He starts talking about the shepherd. And we think about the sheepfold being that, that, that pen for which the sheep are in. He uses the parable of a sheep and the sheepfold to say that there's a, there's a pen that these sheep will go into, that they find safety. There's a pen that these sheep go into that are protected from all the wild animals of the, of the, of the, of the wild. There's a, there's a pen they go in, that they go in, all that come, come in and out of, and have their safety. They go eat and drink and all these type of things, but they go back to this pen for safety overnight and all these things. But they're all led by a shepherd. They're led by a shepherd who, the shepherd who they hear their, his voice, and they know his voice, and they go where he asked them to go, do what he asked them to do. They come and go throughout this door. But he said the only way the sheep are going to follow if they know the shepherd. And if they know the shepherd, they, and they know the voice. No other shepherds can come out there. Other people will come out there to try to pull them away. They don't respond to the voice of the other, of the other people. And he calls those people thieves. Why? Because the only way for the, uh, they, can, uh, they can't get in through the door. Because they are the unbelievers. They are the people that are not the shepherd to the sheep. Therefore, they're trying to get into the wall. They're trying to go under the, under the sheepfold, over the top of the sheepfold. They're not going through the door. Why? They don't recognize the shepherd. They don't want to recognize the shepherd because the shepherd, and in this parable, they let you know that the shepherd is the master of the sheep. If he's the master of the sheep, he keeps the sheep safe. He keeps the sheep nourished. He keeps the sheep and guiding them. He, he gets in front of them to direct them. He gets behind them to drive them. All under the, on, the, on the onus of their shepherd, they know what they're doing. And they find safety with that. He's trying to remind them this morning that this is what takes place when the sheep follow the shepherd. He's trying to let us know this morning, all of them know this morning that, that he followed the Old Testament door as well. He is the shepherd because the Old Testament prophecies came through. And I followed all of the Old Testament prophecies. I am that door. They didn't understand all that. He was trying to talk to them and said, I don't, they don't understand. I don't, I don't get what you're saying. What does that mean? You, you're saying all these things. You're just talking above our head. We don't understand. Coming down to chapter, verse number nine. He goes and said, let me just break it down for you even more plain. He said, I am the door. He tried to show him the sheepfold, and there's a gate on there, and all the way the sheep get into it, it's going through the door. He said, let me just break it down even more. He said, I am that door. I am that door. The only way that you're going to be in this sheepfold and be protected is you at risk, if you know who the shepherd is. The shepherd is me, Jesus Christ, and the only way to get through it is if you have confessed Christ as your personal Savior. He said, the only way you get in this safety and have this passion to go in and out and those type of things is when you recognize the shepherd of the sheep. And many of us in life has find ourselves going to and fro, but have we taken time to recognize that we're under the shepherd? And we're under the shepherd, and, he, he, and he, we're supposed to follow him wherever we go. Where, and wherever we go, we're supposed to make sure he is in full control, and he's driving us or leading us. And make sure that, and why am I doing that? Because if I don't, I'm walking by myself. I want to thank my uncle always tell me, you can, you, if, 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 you did, if, you're, if you're leading, no matter how to follow, you're just taking a walk. And what happens is Jesus is, fought, is leading, and we're supposed to be following. And we're trying to remind us this morning that in order for us to be the sheep he needs us to be, he needs us to follow. But he goes a little further and says, I am the door. But if any man enter in it, he shall be saved. Yeah. He reminds us here that, that not only am I the door, but I am the key to salvation. There is no other door or other gate, no other way to get in. The thieves are trying to go over top of it, try to go under it, trying to find a way to go around it. Why? Because trying to hurt the sheep and try to do things to the sheep and even kill the sheep. But Christ said, if you just respect who I am as, as a shepherd and respect who I am as Jesus Christ and come through this door, yes, you also can be saved. He's trying to remind us this morning that there's only one way towards salvation. There's only one way, one way to be saved. It's not because I live good. It's not because I feel good. It's not because I do good things. It's not because I take care of people or love on people. Only way to become saved is if I respect who the, who, the, who the Savior is and I give my life and confess him. And when I confess him, I, I, I too enter in through that door. He wants us all to enter through that door. He does not want us to enter, be out here being the thieves and the robbers. The thieves and the robbers are those who looked at as unbelievers. And those who don't get into the fold, don't get into the gate, or find themselves outside the gate, which means they find themselves in eternal damnation if they shall leave this place. He's trying to remind this morning that the only way to get to the salvation of the king is to follow the king, acknowledge the king, and come into the sheepfold. And when you come into the sheepfold, then go with me. I'll take you where you want to go. i get you the water you need, the food you need, the nourishment you need. I will build into you. I'll grow with you. The blessings that you provide need or stand in need of, I'll make sure all those things happen. Yeah, things will go, the days will be ups and downs. It might not be peaches and, peaches and cream, but it'll be, it'll be nice. It'll be better than it could have been if you didn't have a shepherd in your life. 
He wants to remind you that, 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 that if you just follow me, just roll with me. Yeah, tears may fall from your eyes at sometimes. It may be hard sometimes. You may be, it may, you may get frustrated at times. But he said, just keep following the shepherd. He said, why I keep following the shepherd? Because I've, I've done some things for you. I'll take care of you. I know what's coming down the line. I know what's, you're going to walk into it. You're going to need me to get through these things. Just keep on following. Just keep on following. But on that, just keep on trusting me, what he's saying. He said, they, they shall go in and, and out and find pasture. When you think about the sheep here, they are being led to their nourishment, being led to their, 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 the water and the food and the grass, all these things, by the shepherd. He's taking them in and taking them out, which means I'm going wherever he goes. And that's what Christ is asking us to do. He said, now, come, when you become saved, you go exactly where I go to the go. You go do what I exactly need you to do, all because now you're following the shepherd. But he also wants to remind us here that there's some thieves around you. There's some thieves around you that, that came to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh-huh. The people that don't believe in the shepherd, don't have followed the shepherd, their, their only opportunity, only thing they have to do is try to get you off track. Yeah. They try to steal your joy, try to steal your, try to steal your love and everything you have in your heart. They say, well, I don't need them following the shepherd. I need them to do the things of the world. Uh-huh. The people of the world are trying to pull you away and get you uh, unfocused and get you distracted. To say, don't follow that shepherd. Times are rough right now. Tears are falling from your eye right now. What is he doing for you right now? Come follow me, what they're trying to say. But these are the thieves that Jesus is trying to warn us about. He said, just trust the shepherd. Because inside the sheepfold, I got you. I'll give you what you stand in need of. Uh-huh. He said, i come. That those who don't know me can have life. Yeah. He said, i come. They may have life and might have it more abundantly. You can live any, any kind you want to. You can live life. You can live life to you're old and great and do all kind of crazy great things. You can, you can ride zip lines and go to Disney World. You can do all these wonderful things. But if you don't have the shepherd in your life, you're just out here taking a walk. Yeah. You're out here taking a walk because now you're walking around and one of these days, Lord's going to come in looking for that soul. One of these days, you're going to come and say, hey, you lived a good life and time is getting up here pretty quick. And it's time for you now to surrender over that soul that you stand in, you have inside of you. It's time to give it up. And you have not gone through the door. He would say, that I'd love to have you, but you didn't come through the door while you were here on earth. And therefore, the time has run out. And therefore, you just are the thieves and robbers. And now it came and healed, healed and destroyed. And now your soul is required of you. And now be in eternal damnation. But he said, hey, well, I came. I came that you might have life. I came that you know the shepherd. I came that you might know, go through that door. And if you go through that door, have life and have life more abundantly. That means we ain't looking to live, live here forever. We ain't looking for, we look, we have a nice car, a nice house, may have a little money in our pocket, but that ain't what it's all about. He can, we came here to live for the king, for the master, for the shepherd. And one of these old days, we're going to check up out of here to go to our dust reward. That's what he wants us to remind us of this morning. That even on today, while it's so over in our hearts and minds, and the separation is real, and we realize our loved one is not here anymore, she made her decision a long time ago. A long time ago, she went through that gate. She went through that door. She recognized Christ as our shepherd. And said, I'll get me into that seafold. I confess Christ as my personal savior. And she went on in that seafold, and he took her where she wanted to go. He led her where she needed to go. And said, I'm going to drive you. I want you to follow me. All these great things. And said, one of these days, I think that's three reminds us that there's a time to be born and a time to die. Yeah. Well, that time to be born was some time, long time ago. But now it came up on March 18th was a time to go. And I know his son used to bring her here every Sunday. He would bring her here, pull her up here in the ramp. She'd get out the car, get up here, walk up in here, have service. They come out here and she stand by that door. Said, my son is on the way. And he come out there and she came down the ramp and got into the car and drove away. But on March 18th, the, the, a car pulled up. You didn't even see it. A car pulled up on that at, at the at hospice and said, I am here to take you home. She looked out there and it was the son of glory standing right there and said, it's time for me to go home. She looked at her family. She said, I love you all, but there was a reward waiting for me. She got packed up her things. She went on the glory, and she's at rest. She's at peace. No pain, no suffering with Jesus right now. And what she wants to remind you right now, she wouldn't come back here for nothing, but she wants to remind you, she followed the shepherd. She walked through the door. She wants you to walk through the door so you see her in glory again. Jesus put the cross on his back for you all. He put the walk of Calvary's here for you all. He died for all of us and he rose for all of us. He wants you to walk through the door. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. 
He said, trust him now. Trust him like Sister Taylor trusted him. And I know she trusted him because I heard her say she trusted him. And that day she trusted him. When he came on, pulled up, and got on out of here. And now she's resting. Now she's no pain, no suffering. Now she's waiting to see us again. But only way we see her, if we walk through that door. Family, we are praying for you. The times will be rough going forward. We realize that. But Rest of Mississippi Baptist Church and all of our officers and members will be here to support you. You come on that door anytime. That door is always open. You come on that door anytime. We will be able to love on you all. Call us anytime. We're to love on you all. Whatever we can do to support you all. We love Sister Taylor very much. So we'll do whatever we can to support you all in the days and months and years going forward. Because she is a child of the king. And we wouldn't have it no other way. We need six ladies to come at this time to carry these flowers. Please, six ladies, come down at this time to carry the flowers. For the f- Thank you. Thank you. Bob Bears, please come. 